So when you're looking for the best quality cookware on the market and willing to spend good money, how do you know you're getting the right gear? Hi, I'm Jed, this is Cook Culture. So today I'm gonna to try to give you the information that you need so that you can choose the best quality cookware for you and spend your money the right way. So when you're buying cookware, when you're spending money on cookware, there is a threshold of what you're gonna believe is the best quality for your dollar. And that's gonna change, you know, between you or your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, you're all gonna go out and buy cookware for yourselves. And each one of you is gonna have a different threshold of what that's gonna be. So I may be like, hey, I'll spend $500 on a saute pan. And if I, you know, calculate in my head that that makes sense to me for the duration of that I'm gonna have it for my rest of my life, then hey, that's really good money spent and I'm really happy. You know, in cookware, you can spend a lot of money. You can really, really overinvest in cookware if that's what you choose to do. And in reality, you know, it's gonna give you some benefit, but there comes diminishing returns when you're spending a lot of money. So, you know, the other option when you're choosing cookware is materials. You know, to one person, cast iron is the absolute best thing and everything needs to be cast iron and they would begrudgingly use a stainless steel pot to maybe boil water or cook pasta, but everything else is cast, either enameled or raw. And to someone else, it's just like, ugh, it's so dirty. I would never use cast iron. It's sticky and yucky and gross and it always looks dirty and I would never touch it, you know, and they want to have everything stainless steel and it's easy to look after or easier to look after and it looks all shiny and you can tell when it's clean and that's the difference between those two people that doesn't mean that one of them is right or one of them is wrong one person just really likes one type of cookware and somebody likes the other type of cookware and that's just totally fine this is my opinion opinion of one guy but i've been selling cookware for 30 years and I've kind of honed into what I really like and what really works for me. And so what I want to just do is give you my opinion of my industry experience of what I found really works and for the thousands of people that I've sold cookware to. So what's my definition of good quality, right? So my definition is a simple design. I've found over time that designers and makers of cookware have tried to overcomplicate things to say, hey, we're different. And it always kind of comes back to just a really simple, easy design of a pan. It, it works and you don't really need to be, oh, well, that special design or whatever it is that they've done to the pan is something that is going to be make it better. It, it's kind of been proven over time that ergonomically, you know, a pan that just looks as simple as this or a pot that is as simple with just a nice simple handle. It feels really good in the hand. Ergonomically, it just feels good. So a simple design with a really nice ergonomic feel. Okay, so I've said this a gazillion times on this channel. Don't buy anything coated. So if you're buying quality cookware for longevity, coated cookware it just doesn't work. They just don't work together. Unfortunately, all clad will make copper core. So this is a 10 inch copper core fry pan. It will last for thousands of years. Like there's nothing that will wear out in this pan. This pan will go on and on and on and on. You put a coated cookware in this pan and unfortunately all clad does come with coated cookware. It will wear out. It can be months, yeah, like literally months. So like $250 for a pan like this. And in months it could be garbage. That's really, really, really unfortunate. So I highly stress, you know, you, you're like, oh, I need that one egg pan. And that's where I would talk to you about cast iron or carbon steel. Where carbon steel, really nice little egg pan shape. You can season it up. It works perfectly well for nonstick if you do it right. And that is a really nice addition to a set of cookware is having some carbon steel or cast iron for, for nonstick ability. So cleaning, cleaning is a big one. So I like to look at things that have less parts. So a difference between, you know, a traditional all clad pan that has rivets and 
the Demeyer line that does not is that you have no rivets in some cookware and you have rivets in other cookware. So rivets are where you're gonna have a buildup of kind of grease burnt on and carbonization. And that's to some people a problem. Um, so some pans without rivets are nicer to have for cleanliness um, and then other ones with rivets. And also the way the handles are attached, you know, when you get a buildup, how easy it to get in and around there to keep the pan clean. So I find choosing your brand and finding which brands are of a really high quality are important. Uh, the best way to go about that is to find your local retailer. Go to your local retailer, see what they have, see what they recommend, and understand from them like what's their experience and what do they think is their best quality, right? What can they get their hands on? And then another one is definitely reviews online. And I am a big fan of Chowhound. Chowhound can be a little bit over the top. Some people, you know, I, I geek out over cookware <laughs> and I really appreciate how others really geek out over cookware, just from the fine detail of all the different types of materials and why and what and so on and so forth. And there's lots to be learned. There's a ton of just volume that's really hard to get through to really understand what people are saying about, you know, their experience. Um, but, you know, there are lots of different types of cookware in the world and it's a really good central point that people do talk about things and compare, you know, what they've experienced between different brands. And it's nice to just get a sense of things as you're starting to, to look around and hone into what kind of stainless steel cookware that you're looking for to add to. When it comes to cast iron, I suggest, you know, looking at that two different things, focus on cast, focus on carbon steel, and try to make that decision around what kind of skillet that you're looking for. Uh, and then focus on stainless as kind of the body of your cookware, so for myself, if I'm putting together a really great set of cookware, I am more of the opinion of having individual pieces of buying cookware piece by piece. That does not say that a set of cookware cannot work really, really well for some people. If you get a nice high quality set of cookware for a really reasonable price because it's in a set, that's great. That could be a really nice place to start. Sometimes there may be a fry pan or a big stock pot or something that you don't use very often. But when you compare the pricing to a set to buying open stock, if you're buying something similar, you can get really good value. Personally, I really like just having a few pieces. I'm a big fan of less is more. You know, for me, the basic of a set of cookware is one skillet, having a saute pan, and a you know small stock pot of some size and that i can do absolutely everything i need you know definitely that is not my limit of my set of cookware i have you know too many pans and quite a lot of pots one skillet this is a 10 inch i really enjoy it um, a cast iron or carbon steel piece i find carbon steel in a small little size like this works beautifully for for toasting things a lot of people will call this an egg pan uh, absolutely fantastic in carbon steel and then a saute pan that is wonderfully versatile uh, is a tremendous piece for you know simmering and sauteing and you know things with more liquid it's it's fantastic uh, you can also braise in there too and then you know a, a sauce pot stock pot of, of some sort, uh, you know, this is a five and a half quart, but going up into an eight quart for doing pasta, um, super, super useful size. And then the last piece that I absolutely love is an oven. So a Dutch oven or what they call from the stove, this is a coquette, uh, you know, this is a seven quart. It's a tremendous piece. I use it often and, and love slow cooking in an enamel cast iron pot. So in conclusion, my advice to you is to buy the best quality cookware that you could afford. So search out those brands that you love, decide on what makes a reasonable amount to you. You know, you can easily spend $200 on a fry pan and that's great. You can spend, you know, $300 on a fry pan. This is a Dubai a induction ready copper fry pan that retails in Canada for somewhere around $750. This is not reasonable for most people, but it's there, it's available to you. So you can spend a huge amount on different cookware, but that threshold of what makes sense. 
Then the next one, weight. You know, and that's where I highly suggest again to get into your local retailer, feel the cookware, pick it up when you grab it and you've got it in your hand. How does it feel? Got a bit of weight to it. You know, I don't want you to be buying cookware that you're like, oh, I took his suggestion and I bought cookware that's way too heavy and now I don't like it. Find that fine balance. You know, look for cookware maybe that has handle helpers. You can get larger fry pans that have handle helpers on them. And that works really, really well for being able to pick things up because if one's still on the stove, it doesn't really matter. But buy weight and really hone in on a budget that makes you comfortable and spend the most you possibly can and get as weighty as you can. And at the end of the day, you will buy really high quality cookware that will last you forever and you will be successful. So thanks so much. Questions, leave them below. And I really appreciate it. Thank you.